everybody, and welcome to CTV. My name is Sierra Artemis, and I am your host. Guys, be sure to check me out on social media. That's Facebook.com at Sierra Artemis TV. You can check me out on YouTube. That's Sierra Artemis. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. Guys, the purpose of CTV is to highlight minority businesses, creators, and entrepreneurs in hopes to inspire people like you on the other side of the screen to go out and chase your goals and your dreams. So my guest today is heavily involved in the community here in Columbia. Um, she's a domestic violence awareness advocate, the owner of She Did That Event, and most recently, she was crowned Miss South Carolina Plus America for the year 2020-2021. I have Miss Tina Torres. Hi, Miss Tina. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. So thank you so much for joining me and congratulations on being crowned. So how was that experience for you? Thank you. Uh, it was totally different. It definitely was something that I never would have thought that I would have done. And uh, to be able to do something like this, it definitely isn't for the week. So you really, really have to be like all in in order to uh, for them to see the best of you. Okay, so you said it's not something you would have done. So what what made you what made you run? Well, what what tends to happen is that we get used to being in our circle, right? And we get used to being in a box where it's comfortable. And I knew that in order for me to reach more people in regards to what I do with domestic violence child abuse, sexual assault, things like that. Uh, I needed to be, I needed to put myself out there a little bit more and I needed to meet new people and I needed to be able to tell others about what I do so that we could begin to bring more attention to bring in domestic violence, sexual assault, child molestation to the forefront. Oftentimes we as women, um, when things happen to us, you know, some of us, we tend to just shy back and decide to stay behind closed doors. Well, I wanted to show that regardless of the things that I've been through in my past, that I am just as special and just as important to grace the stage with all the other beautiful women in the world. That's awesome. So so what did you learn from this experience? And did participating in the pageant change your, outli uh, excuse me, your outlook on life in me? Uh, yeah, so... This, this experience taught me that regardless of what I've been through, I, I have the ability to shine just like everyone else. And that I am just as blessed, fortunate, deserving, uh, regardless of the abuse that I went through, uh, regardless of anything in the world, it just, it was an experience that made me feel like, yeah, I can almost pretty much accomplish anything. I just don't know what else just yet. But what I would say is that um, I feel that everyone should try something that makes you go crazy behind closed doors. Because like I said, doing this isn't for the weak. Like you have to change clothes. You have to go with this color. You have to go with that color. You have to make sure your hair is right. You have to make sure your makeup's right. It's just so much. But it's another notch on the belt that I was able to conquer. And so therefore... It, it, it was it was amazing. And now I'm going to, I won. And now I am heading to nationals to compete Ooh. against 30 plus other women in Kentucky at the end of July. So my journey is not done yet in the pageantry world. That's awesome. Um, I remember when you uh, first entered the pageant, I saw some things um, on your social media where you kind of was like, uh, you know, you were kind of like wanting to almost give up at some point. So could you tell me a little bit about that? I mean, you don't have to. If you don't yeah, I became scared. No, 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 no. I'm very transparent. Um, I became frightened. I, I started to doubt myself and I started to, um, you know, I was thinking like I'm, I'm this big red girl, you know what I'm saying? And um, I didn't feel like I was, in, I was, I don't know. I didn't feel like I was as special, as important as all the other young ladies that were standing beside me, you know, and I didn't. I didn't know what it was like to walk right. I didn't know what, what it was like to speak right, uh, enunciate words, you know what I'm saying? I just, mm. I grew up thinking you get what you get, you know? And so English, English, even though I speak English, there's certain words I'd be like, I can't pronounce that, you know? And having a complete sentence and, um, you know, 
walk this way, walk that way, stand up straight, do Listen, I'm just a girl from the city trying to make it work. And pageantry, pageantry was not my thing. So I just I became discouraged and thought about quitting. But I had such a great support system. And a lot of people I'd never met online who were just like, keep going. So, and yeah, I just became look. scared and frightened. But, but look where it got you. And, and I love your transparency. And I love that you were able to let people know, hey, look, um, I got discouraged, but look, I won. And I think, oh, I got chills. That's just a message in itself. You know, is that's so inspiring. I mean, mm -hmm. that, there's plenty of us. Yeah. I know sometimes we don't feel deserving or we, we feel less than. We feel like there's always someone out there better than us. But guess what? If it's for you, it's for you. And, and just I, I can see the growth. Because, I mean, I know you're grown and you do a lot, but I definitely see the growth because I've done an interview <laughs> with you before. And I know sometimes you can get a little a little shy, but it, but it's, it's crazy that you can get a little shy when you you do so much, you know. Um, so I think I think that's a great story. So so what advice would you give to anyone want or wanting to enter a pageant, specifically uh, Miss South Carolina Plus America, maybe for next year? So the advice I would give is, first of all, to make sure this is what you want to do, because. It takes a lot of work. It's not easy. It is really hard work to be in a pageant. And I would say, if this is something that you're thinking about doing, do it. Just be prepared for all of the work. Be prepared for the countless hours of trying to make sure you got all your all your um, garments in place. You have to make sure that you're watching the news. Make sure you're up to date on what's happening currently, because they will ask you questions that deal with that. And the government, the federal, all of that. I would say get you a good support system, one that will not allow you to quit. Because oftentimes we like to be around people who will just be like, yeah, girl, go ahead on. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Do it next year. No, get you somebody that's going to make you push forward because those are the people that want to see you win. If you want to win, you got to get out there and bat. And the only way you're going to do that is by stepping up to the plate. So I would say give it all you got. And if you find that you get slightly discouraged, just call me. I got you, girl. I'm coming to you. Oh, that's awesome. So so how many people, uh, I don't want to put you on a spot and you can't think of everyone, but how many people um, was on your team? You know, you know, you said wardrobe, hair, and I know um, you had um, a couple people helping you with speech and all that stuff. So how many people, how many people is that? Believe it or not, I only had one person on my team that dealt with makeup and hair. And I had two people on my team that made sure I got dressed correctly, which was still the one person that did my hair, and my makeup and my sister, Nicole. And then as far as like clothing wise, all of Facebook, every time I was looking for something, people would send me things, go to this site, go to that site. So I had a core team, which consisted of two, mm -hmm. but then I had a big team, which consisted of Facebook family and friends. Oh, that's so sometimes you just need one good person that can do your hair, makeup, and has style fashion, you know, in their brain, mm -hmm. and everything else will fall into place. That's awesome. I need to get me one person that can just help me with all that. That can also be my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just switching gears a little bit, let's talk a little bit about your business. She did that and what that what falls under that. Um, I know you do wedding okay. planning, event planning, and you also have you do a lot of advocacy um, under all under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. So so let's talk about the mm -hmm. name. She did that. How did you come up with it and what all falls under the umbrella of she did that? Okay, so she did that actually came about several years ago. I thought about doing an online boutique, but then that meant I was online countless hours trying to find clothes in all these different countries, and I had no clue what I was doing. The reason why I came up with the words she did that was because oftentimes when we go somewhere or we're hanging out with our friends or we're doing something fun, and when we walk away from it, we'll say, oh, she did that. Or they did that. Wow, that was great. Yeah, they did that. So I just went ahead and coined she did that. I'm a female. And so I was like, I'm a she. So why not? I'm just going to say she did that. And so from there, I just took it from that point and, and decided to just call my business. She did that. That's how I, I did it. it. 
Um, I love it. It's so empowering. Yeah. It's so <laughs> brief, but that's amazing. Um, so mm -hmm. speaking, speak. So let's talk a little bit more about what all comes under that umbrella. So what what's all a part of she did okay. that? Okay, so she did that does weddings. We do all type of events. We also plan events such as um, festivals. We'll get contracted out um, to do festivals. Like there's a couple that we're working on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we do awareness events. Uh, we also created, she did that community advocate foundation because we do a lot of awareness events as well. So we, we talk about domestic violence, sexual mm -hmm. assault, um, child molestation, high school dropout teen pregnancy, all of the things that I experienced uh, way back when. So I took all of that and decided that I wanted to make sure that I got more involved in bringing those to the forefront that are constantly swept underneath the rug. So we do event planning, weddings, I officiate weddings all across the United States. I can do that now. And then we have the awareness side, which falls underneath the foundation. Um, I was going to mention you being efficient now. I'm like, my goodness, girl, you're doing it all. You you plan to win, and you're part of the win. Okay, okay. If you're just tuning in, I'm here with the beautiful Tina Torres, the community advocate here in Columbia, South Carolina, recently crowned Miss South Carolina Plus America for the year 2020, 2021. Um, she just told us about her experience in the pageant and um, what, but what has life been like since that win? I know, I know you've mentioned it a little bit. So, but what has it been like? I know you said you, um, you have the, the big, big thing happening in June, but what has life been like since you, you had all that rush of having to get all the stuff and now you like, is it like a little more peaceful, a little bit calm? How is that? Uh, it, well, it's crazy with the pageant. Um, not only did I win Miss, Miss South Carolina Plus America 2021, I also won Queen Supreme, which wow. meant that I went in and swept pretty much all of the categories. Um, wow. And so I wasn't anticipating that. So, uh, you know, since then, it's been very, very different. Uh, when I'm asked to come somewhere, asked to do something, you know, I, I bring my crown, I bring a sash. Uh, and so it's, 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 it's different. It's, it's weird when you were the person that liked to be behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, you have to come from behind that closed door. So now you are, you are somebody that little girls look up to. You are someone that women who have been through hell and back look up to. You know, you're an inspiration to people who thought that they couldn't and they can. Um, and so it's 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 heartwarming. It could be overwhelming too at the same time. You know, because all I am is just this little girl that wants to just be able to help everybody, right? And so you don't think that winning a crown and a sash bumps you up to knowing that. Yeah, you are somebody that helps someone, but you're also someone that people believe in, that you have inspired, that you have shown that no matter what they've been through, that they can they can do anything that they put their mind to. And so for me, I embrace it, but then I get scared again, and then I just want to go hide, but then I come running back out, and I'm like, let's do this, you know? So yeah, it's, it's like different. And, uh -huh. I, was saying, I was saying I love it because it pushed you out of your comfort zone. But but look how yeah. look what it is. I love it. I love it. Um, so <laughs> your advocacy, um, your advocacy and um, the events that you plan, is that all on your website? Mm -hmm. OK, so guys, if you check. Yeah, out, actually, and we're updating. Ahead, and we'll be updating the website as well. But yeah, a lot of that stuff is on there, especially from the past up till now. We try to um, make sure we keep things up there. And a lot of times people can also just mainly reach me on, on social media. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, guys. And if you uh, check that handle at the bottom, her Instagram is she did that events LLC. That's on Instagram. And if you see the little rolling ticker at the bottom of the screen, it has her website. Um, you can check out she did that events.com. Um, I'm pretty sure. Do you, you have contact information on there? On your website, a way for people to contact you? Yes. Yeah, everything. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm so reachable. Yes, ma'am. Okay, awesome, awesome. So let's talk a little bit more about community advocacy. So um, you you host a domestic violence awareness gala uh, every year in October, and you also have been working with a team um, 
to to bring Juneteenth Festival here every year. And this year is the fifth year. So let's let's talk a little bit about uh, the Domestic Violence Gala. Um, and then let's talk a little bit about uh, Juneteenth. So we are on year six for the Purple Gala, which brings awareness to domestic violence. Uh, I am a survivor of domestic violence, and a lot of the women that I am around are as well and or know someone that is. Mm. And so our goal is to always bring awareness to it, especially in the month of October, because the month of October also has breast cancer month and all you ever see is pink. You hardly ever see purple. And purple represents the awareness for domestic violence. So it is our goal to always make sure that we bring that to the forefront. No more sweeping that underneath the rug. I, I don't like that. And so um, with the domestic violence um, awareness gala, the purple gala, we speak about domestic violence, not only just in women when it happens to women, but to men as well. Believe it or not, there are men out there who suffer from domestic violence. They are not the perpetrator. They're actually the victim. And so this year, we actually have a male who will be speaking and telling his story about being a victim of domestic violence. We also bring in statistics. This year, we'll have Seven Sunday performing, which is great, which is a local band. And also, we'll have a cigar bar out back for those that like to have a cigar. Uh, we'll have food from Jeffrey Lampkin, um, Country Boy Kitchen out of Sumter. And then also we have the open bar and music and everything else, poetry, stuff like that. But our goal is to always bring awareness to domestic violence. You never know who's watching. You never know who's listening. And we always want people to know that we're here. And our goal is to help them as them, as much as we can. I love it. And um, like you said, I think everyone has either know someone or maybe experienced domestic violence in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I, People that know me know what I dealt with, um, with losing my best friend, a childhood friend, um, and just, you know, I've, I've just been around it. Um, and, and I think a lot of people, they don't, they don't understand the trauma that that leaves. They think once the person is out yeah. of the situation, mm -hmm. then now everything is resolved, but you're left with that trauma and, and not just for um, the victim, but the family as well, especially if you experience that yeah. uh, with the person. Um, do you have an email? I want to put that, mm -hmm. uh, I want to make sure they have that because guys, I, I don't mean to put so much on you, Miss Tina, but y'all, she's so nurturing and she's so open. She's, she's always available. I know sometimes we, we're, it's easy for us to, to pour in and, you know, sometimes we don't pour out. And so I want to make sure you're also pouring out too, Miss Tina. I don't want to put so much on you, but, um, <laughs> You, you have a lot of great resources. If anybody wants to get in uh, contact with you, if they want to help, I'm sure yeah. you need volunteers for the event. Mm -hmm. um, what's a good email for uh, for everyone? It's Tina Torres at she did that events dot com. All right, guys, I'm just putting that on the screen. Um, again, guys, that's her email. It's Tina Torres at she did that events dot com. I'm going to keep that up there. Um, and mm -hmm. so what's the date for the gala this year? The date is October the 9th. Mm -hmm. It is at the Phillips Market Center in West Columbia. And it start, the doors will open at 6. And we will have um, a meet and greet uh, cocktail hour from 6 to 7.15. Uh, during that time, the 7 Sunday Band will be performing live. And, of course, we'll have a cigar bar on the outside um, where they'll be able to hear the music and everything like that. So, and then we'll ha also have um, some food during that time too, appetizers for everybody. So doors open at six. The event officially starts at 7.15. Tickets are on sale on Eventbrite underneath the sixth annual Purple Gala. We have a special right now going on, I believe until May 1st. I believe the tickets are 65 currently. And then after May 1st, they go up to 75. Uh, we also have tables, sponsorships, volunteer opportunities, and um, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> so you're still you're still accepting vendors as well. Um, actually, we do not have vendors at the Purple Gala. What oh. we find is that we want everyone to really be in tune with the event itself, mm -hmm. being able to get the information that they need, and also being able to enjoy not having to feel as though they need to purchase something. If that makes sense. Okay. So the only vendor, we will have one vendor, but that one will be damsel in defense. 
those are the people that come out that have the different um, items that you can actually put in your purse or in your wallet or something. Should something happen that you did not want, to, that should not have happened, they, you'll have the ability to defend yourself. So we'll have um, Danzo in defense there, but we won't have any other vendors there. Okay. Do you need any more volunteers for this event? Are you looking yes, for we. Okay. So because of COVID, what we do is we have plated meals. And so having a good support team in the back that helps bring food out, helps greet guests, take them to their tables and things like that. Yes, I, I'm always open for volunteers. Okay, so if you guys are um, interested in volunteer, um, excuse me, volunteering, um, or if you need to contact Miss Tina, that email address is right there. That's Tina Torres, as she did that events dot com. So uh, we're gonna change gears a little bit. I know you have another cause that's coming up closer. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Juneteenth, and then we're gonna circle back to that. So, so tell us about Juneteenth. Okay. Uh, when you when you guys started, what's going on this year, and you know how you became okay. involved. Okay, so Juneteenth actually, uh, it's the South Carolina Juneteenth, uh, South Carolina Juneteenth Freedom Fest. The um, organizers are Jamal and Carmen Bradley. They are the ones. They originally started this five years ago, and it happened down in Five Points actually at Harambe, and they had about forty-five people at that time. The next year, I was blessed to be able to be contracted to take on the logistics. And we have grown tremendously since then. We are now year five, um, which is happening uh, uh, June 19th in Columbia, South Carolina. We actually are turning it into a three-day event this year. Wow. Thursday, the, the 17th, we will have a meet and greet at Perfectly Plated, which is in Irmo. On Friday, we will actually have a Juneteenth gala. And that will be at the main course downtown. Saturday will be the Juneteenth Festival from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. It is going to be next to Capitol Heights, which is over on Farrell Road. I believe that address is 5406 Farrell Road. It's nine acres. We'll be utilizing every single acre that we possibly can. We will have vendors, food trucks. Um, we will also have nonprofit agencies out there with information, employment, um, those that have employment opportunities. We're looking at bounce houses for the kids, having a little section just for the kids to be able to enjoy themselves while the parents are doing whatever it is that they would like to be doing out there, shopping, eating, you know. And we are working on surprise guests for the stage. We also are welcoming local talent, providing that it is family oriented. We um, praise dance, poetry, um, whatever it is that they would like to bring to the stage, we are welcoming all of that. And um, Oh, one second. And whatever, whatever else. So it's going to be a good time. And we look forward to fellowship, networking. Um, we can't wait to drop the information about um, the surprise guests that we're working on. This will be the first year that we're able to bring something fantastic to the stage. So, yeah, so we got a lot. And uh, we got a little bit of time to plan it, but we're going to make it happen. <laughs> So, so who do we contact for that? Who do we contact um, mm -hmm. if anybody wants to be a vendor or to contact you? So you're the point of contact. Yeah. Okay, so Miss is going to also be the point yeah. of contact for that. We have her email, guys. I'm going to put it back up there on the screen. You are going to know uh -huh. this email address by heart before the show is over. The Tina Torres, as she did that events.com. And guys, she did that. She did all of this. She does it all. <laughs> you need to change it to she does it all because she does. You do. <laughs> uh, you know what? Um, I might need to look into it. Let me write that down. Right. I might need to look into that. Branch off. That's a that's a, a sub branch. She does it all because you really do. You really do. She, you, you pageants. You do uh, community advocacy. You did a lot with the Million Man March last year. Do you, are they doing something else this year? I think March. Oh, I don't know. I, you know, once once there's something happening in the community, it it brings me joy. I love getting involved with community events. You know, activities, things like that. So for me, if I can find a way to volunteer. You know, do you need water? Do you need snacks? You know, I know that um, if I put it out on my Facebook, I, I'm going to have a big, massive team. So if you don't want me on your team, if you don't need all that extra stuff, you might not right. want to have me on the team because right. I believe that when I go to Facebook or if I go to any type of social media and I say, hey, guys, this is what I'm working on. 
who wants in, I'm, I'm bringing a whole army. Uh, right. Because transparency is everything. And when you're transparent with people and you're upfront and you're honest with them and you tell them what you need and they see what you're doing, they will be there to help you. So, yeah, I just love community stuff. I'm telling you, I love it. It's, it's, it's a, 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 a great sense of self that you get when you help others being mm -hmm. selfless. It's like a yeah. that sense of self, but a sense of joy that, um, mm -hmm. and I know you get it and I get it. I love it. I love helping people. I love seeing people in a better place. I, I love being yeah. a part of that um, because I know mm -hmm. how it feels to, to need, you know, and, and I think yeah. people who have been in positions where they know what it feels like, it's, their their uh their drive to want to give is is so much more passionate. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm going to switch gears just a little bit. Um, we talked about some of the organizations and community advocacy that you you do. So what other community organiza organizations are you a part of? Um, I know we talked a little bit um off air about um sh not sugarcoating sexual assault, the event that's happening closer in April. So um, if you want to tell me a little bit about that and what other uh, community. Sure. Um, I'm going to share something with you. Um, on March 1st, I was sexually assaulted um, by somebody that was a trainer. Uh, they I had been going to them for a couple of months, and um, they just took it upon themselves to, you know, violate me. And so from that point, um, it's been a, an, a, I've been on an emotional roller coaster this entire month thus far. Um, and so, you know, some people know, some people don't know. They knew something was wrong based on my posts. Right. Uh, they knew something was wrong because I hadn't been like attending things. I kind of had just been canceling. Um, and then I just started reaching out to people that I know that have been very supportive of me and letting them know what occurred so that they could understand that this is the reason why they, that I'm, that I hadn't been uh, as active in the month of March. Although, I still needed to promote the women that I adore, women that I've never met. I still went ahead with my series of let's get to know her, um, which I had collected over 150 bios and pictures of women and was posting them every day so that people in the community could see, know who she is. And she may be somebody that you want to connect to. So that happened on March 1st. And so um, I created an, uh, a candid conversation event that deals with stop sugarcoating sexual assault. This is us getting together, talking about the realness of sexual assault, that there is a lot more to just thinking that it is um, sexual um, penetration. There's a lot more to it than just that. And we wanna make sure that we as women and as men are clear and that we do not allow anyone to continue to sugarcoat it. It is real. It is happening. And we need to stop it. And we need to stop letting people think that they can get away with it. So that is um, the Stop uh, sugarcoat, Sugarcoating Sexual Assault. And it's happening on the 6th of April at the Golden. They will shut down the restaurant from 530 to 8 so that we may be able to come in and do and have these candid conversations. We have people that will be coming that will show you how to protect yourself what ways you can get yourself out of a situation before it happens. We will also have someone there to discuss your rights and how do you go about being able to report what has happened to you without someone making you feel less than. And also this, how we can support each other when things like this happen. So that's what's happening on um, April the 6th. And I've now added that to a list of things that I'll be working on going forward. Please let me know if there's anything that I can do or if anything that our viewers can do. Again, I, I am terribly sorry that that happened to you. I hate that that happened. I hate that people feel like it's okay, you know, to do things like that. But mm -hmm. what I don't think people realize when, you know, what, when they do these things, they don't realize there's people like you that won't stay silent, that that is going to advocate for other people that have been in a situation like you have. And I just appreciate yeah. you you turning that situation around. And and instead of, I know, I know you had to give yourself that time to, you know, maybe, you know, go through those emotions that come after something like that. But I, I appreciate the fact that you were able to to dig in and say, all right, I, I already helped with advocacy. 
I'm going to do, I want to do something to help other people. You're always, even when you're going through stuff, you're constantly and consistently thinking of others. And I, I totally admire that. I totally admire that. Um, you briefly mentioned um, the Facebook post. That was actually going to be something else that I mentioned um, before we ended today. Um, I just love how you highlighted all the women this month. I mean, you you had you said like 150. I'm like it's it's like 50 rolling almost every day. I'm like oh my gosh, and and it's amazing to see because these are they're they're everyday people, you know. But they're yeah. they're business women. Is 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 you mm -hmm. and me? Is people that's involved in the community? You don't even have to be, you know. You don't even have to have all these accolades and these titles. You just celebrated women being women, and I loved every bit yeah. of it. Gosh, she had bios yeah. she had these beautiful pictures and a couple times i was on there too i was featured thank you for featuring me too there are some people i'm like man she looked like me <laughs> i was like is that me too I don't yeah know i think i just wanted like i just wanted um march was women's history month right and it and it was a celebration of women and it was it was a project that i had been working on for a week actually and within a week i had received so many like um, of the bios and the pictures and I was just so excited and you know when that happened the day that I was supposed to launch that project mm -hmm. um, it it took a minute you know what I'm saying like I, I didn't want to do it at that point I didn't want to I didn't want to go outside I didn't want to I didn't want to do anything but then I was like that it, it wasn't their fault you know what I'm saying and it wasn't my fault and so I I was like you know what double I got you I got you. Let me show you what I'm about to do. And even though I cried so much behind closed doors and I cried so much, um, even when I would post, I would cry. You know what I'm saying? And so, but I had to keep pushing because if I didn't keep pushing, you know, the the mind is, um, an, uh, I can't remember the saying, but an idle mind is the devil's playground, playground. right? Mm -hmm. So my goal was not to let the devil play on the swing set in my mind. And so I kept making sure that I got up every morning and I posted the, you know, women and I read their bios and I got to read more. And it was some of the women I'd never even met before. And so it was an honor that they trusted me to put that out there. But I had to remember to honor myself too, to say, baby girl, you did that. Regardless of what he did, you still came and, and sat at this desk and you still did what you said you was going to do. And so therefore, I am, you know, it took a lot. It took a lot. But it was great to read those bios and it was great to see all the accomplishments that the women, you know, what they came from and where they were going and what they were trying to do. And even women who didn't have businesses, who had dreams and goals, right, and, right. you know, was looking forward to this, that and the other. And I was just like, this is so, so. They may not realize it. They will on the 31st when I post it. They gave me hope. They gave me strength by being able to read their bios and being able to post them every day. Reading your bio, reading um, Christy Quaterbaum's bio, reading all these different bios. And I was thinking to myself, regardless of what happened to me on the first, I still did what I said I was going to do. And I was she proud persisted. of myself for that. You persisted. You know, I think this is a wonderful way uh, to end Women's Month. A woman who has celebrated people, a woman who has celebrated women all month long. I My last show of the month gets to feature you. And not only are you you miss uh, plus South Carolina America you are a queen you 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 have a crown you. that that just sticks with you every day you know even when you don't have on that the shiny silver crown you wear a crown you have an aura a light that you know when I look at you I'm like she's a queen this this is this is queen mother here guys and I and I really thank you for taking the time to to be a part of my show today and um and thank you for all of this of great information. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to skim through these events. You said um, the first one you're okay. going at Gold Den. Um, that's April 6th. That's the Stop Sugar Coating uh, Sexual Assault. Um, I'm going to move these banners out of the way so mm -hmm. you guys can see this better. Um, so again, guys, okay. it's April 6th. That is at 5.30 p.m. from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. All the information is there, guys. If you need to screenshot it, I'll, I'll be sure to post this on my page as well, guys. Um, what day is the Juneteenth again, 
Remind me. Oh, so it is three days. So it's the 17th through the 19th with the festival being on the 19th. Okay. All right. So guys, I'm going to have that on the bottom of the screen. Um, so you guys can have that information and the domestic violence gala that is happening um, October 9th. Um, there'll be more information to come. Um, but so far that is at the Phillips Market Center. That's 117 Ballard Court, West Columbia. Um, and I'm also going to uh, put the, uh, the Eventbrite link in the comments live so you guys can click on that. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us today, Ms. Dina? Yes, ma'am. For the Purple Gala, we definitely are having limited tickets because of COVID. Okay. Okay. Last year, we sold out so early and we had a waiting list. Okay. Um, and uh, that was the first time that we had an extensive waiting list. Mm. So I do want to encourage people to get their tickets early because once we sell out at the 150 um the amount of people that we're going to uh, have in the building, that's it. We won't be allowing any more after 150 because we definitely want people to be safe and comfortable and we will be practicing uh, the regulations that are needed for COVID um, protection. Okay. All right, guys. You guys heard that. So go ahead and get your tickets ASAP before they are gone. Thank you again, Miss Tina, for joining me today. And um, You're welcome. We'll Thank we'll you for having me. You're more than welcome. Okay. All right, guys, be sure to check out these events and more. If you forget or if you need more information, I will have all of this on my website, the sierraartemis.com. Hey, guys, don't go away yet. Let's check out some spoken word by Taboo Hazel. If you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention. If you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention. See, my goal was to teach and reach the minds of youth by promoting successful lives through careers, academics, and basic living. So I decided to start giving. Giving back to the group that I thought lacked the most knowledge, elementary youth. My goal was to be able to reach the minds of the young ones, so I began teaching with no means of preaching about gangs or guns because I thought that the young ones only worried about making friends and having fun. I believe that this age group seeked out the notion that recess was a time for playing. Not laying between innocent legs, hiding behind concrete bricks while smoking on marijuana sticks now. I knew that the little ones waved goodbye to mommy and daddy at the bus stop. And sometimes with tears. Simply wishing that upon arrival to school that someone would be there simply to hug away their fears. And so I decided to become just that. A guardian guided senior. I became a confidant and an outlet when children felt alone by providing a safe haven and a security home. But in my office on the first day, a nine-year-old makes her way in. Escorted by confusion, she gives off the illusion that she succumbed with sleepless nights and physical fights of abuse. She says to me, Miss Counselor, my wife says the child is being violated and I'm famished, forced to storm on suffocation for food. Help me, please. Feed my heart because I deserve to start being a child again. Behind her trails 10-year-old Tommy who's tired of lying about his mommy who's dying from trying to cope with a cocaine addiction. But then in walks worried Wally with his bruised long eyes and cries and his counselor. I ain't got much of a family. But to bring out the man in me, I joined a gang. Didn't know I'd be beating initiation gang style. Help me please, Miss Counselor. See, I'm just a child. And so I let down my guard to comfort and secure the crown. Forgot about my college educational knowledge and my trained techniques because a mother in me wouldn't allow me to be just another school counselor with a master's degree. My goal then was to free their minds. See, how many times must we remind ourselves that teachers can't be trained to teach? Genuine teachers are born into this world ready to embrace the idea that every boy and girl has the potential to succeed. You see, but we, we need to ask ourselves the question, where are we going wrong? When our children can't read or write, but can recite the lyrics to every Nicki Minaj and Drake song. We need to instill in our youth to pull their pants up and to hold their heads high. We need to teach them about self-respect and to never let opportunities pass them by. We need to be able to preach the wisdom from our sisters' voices that have molded us into who we are today. We need to pray with them, walk with them, talk with them, laugh with them, sing with them, dance with them, pray with them, pray for them, pray with them, pray for them, pray with them, pray for them. Sometimes people, y'all, we just need to pray. 
especially with everything that's going on in this world today, y'all, we better pray. And we need to lead them and teach them how to lead. And you see, all we need is to have a passion for helping children set goals to achieve. Help them to understand that nothing is impossible. It's in themselves they believe. Embrace the mind of the soul to help them control how to steer their desires toward positive goals and drop knowledge like DJ drop beats to help them understand that the educational system can be as fun as running a new dance movement of the hands and the feet. You see, we got to find ways to connect to our young ones because we're losing them to a battle of defeat. Desperate demons are devouring their minds because we're worried about our paycheck and they're worried about something to eat. So wake up. Let's feed our children. Let's feed them by embracing their hearts their minds and their souls. Let's learn to control the misconception that our children can't learn, but instead help them to earn a rightful place in this misconstrued society where I challenge you to make this your number one priority. Please, wake up before it's too late.